attention, please. It's time for the final countdown. The show starts in. Thank you. 
Well, good evening there, my friends, wherever you are in the world, and welcome to The Artist Heart Live, back by popular demand. I am your host, a psychologist in training, artist, author, motivational speaker, mental health mentor, and so much more. I am your host, John Morris, and it is a delight to be here with you. As you can tell, folks, this show is a little bit different compared to the other show, which is designed more at spirit. And, and is more relaxed. This is a show that's full of energy. And, and in the crazy thing, and this crazy world that's going on right now, you know, we want to put you guys in a really high energy state, make you feel really, really good, really happy, and, and give you that buzz that you need. And the Artist Heart Live is the only show that is going to do that. If you're looking for something more deep and spiritual and tranquil, then of course, our other podcast you can check out every Wednesday on uh, on Anchor, on uh, what we got, on Anchor, on Apple, on Spotify, and on YouTube, of course, um, and that is the Battles We All Face podcast. But I am delighted to be here with you tonight, folks, wherever you're watching this. And and let's turn to the news a little bit, shall we? Because, you know, it, it, we'll, we'll get to the, the show a little bit momentarily. But the news this week has been really, really interesting. First of all, congratulations to Sam Ryder in the Eurovision Song Contest 2022. Can you believe it? We were actually in the left side of the, uh, of, of the columns. And had it not gone to the public vote, we would have actually won. So, Sam, well done. It was a phenomenal song, phenomenal effort. My wife and I, we thoroughly loved it, and it was a blast. The entire night from start to finish was phenomenal. Um, some of the, the crazy things that went on with the pre uh, presenters and things was very interesting. But um, I got to say, um, hearing, uh, what was it, Mika's um, you know, uh, montage was phenomenal. Uh, I grew up and heard that kind of stuff, and it was wonderful. Maybe, maybe I will do Mika's uh, songs at some point. That, that'll be entertaining, won't it? Um, but it was a sheer delight to watch the Eurovision Song Contest, to see people and countries from all over Europe, all the weird and wonderful things that they get up to, and uh, and it was a blast. And, and we enjoyed the music pretty much, you know, solidly for, for, for you know, throughout the night. Um, in other areas of the news, actually, blood tests have been taken. And um, this is why, folks, on the Battles Wheel Face podcast, we always tell you to be very, very careful on how you store your water. Uh, a lot of people like to store their water in plastic bottles. Do not store your water in plastic bottles. Ideally, you want a copper vessel or... Here I've got a I've got a jug, an old fashioned jug, or a, or, or at worst a glass, um, because what you tend to find is, and this is actually now scientifically happening. People had blood tests uh, taken, uh, and it was a random survey almost, and 80% of the people that had bloods taken, uh, I believe it was in the United States, it could have been in the UK as well, it was reported in the UK, but 80% of them had plastic enzymes in their blood system, which unless you want to be plastic man or plastic woman, is not the thing that you want to have happen. So how does this happen? Well, when people store water in plastic bottles, and they usually leave it on a table or on a counter or kitchen surface or things when the sun hits it it heats up the bottle which means that the plastic enzymes are going to heat up they're going to go into the water you drink the water then you all of a sudden have the plastic enzymes in your body because your body absorbs the water um, so wherever possible, store your water in a copper vessel. Uh, you know, th these flasks now are, are literally all over the world. And also, you know, be storing them in, in anything really other than plastic. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, other things in the news, folks. Spring is here. Spring is very, very much well and truly in, uh, in full bloom right now. And some of the gorgeous flowers uh, that we have here in Scotland have literally been springing up left, right, and center. My wife and I went to B&Q, the, the hardware store, uh, yesterday, and we had a tremendous amount of fun buying up flowers and plants. If you ever want to really redecorate your garden, go to places like B&Q. Because what they do, they have all these flowers and vegetables on sale, like something that might cost £25. You can sometimes pick up for £3 and £4. Pounds, and all it needs is a water and a little bit of TLC. Um, and this is what we found. We have literally basically decorated our entire garden um, for a fraction of the price of what it should be with some very, very rare and beautiful flowers and, uh, you know, and, and stuff that keeps coming back every single year as well. Gardens are a phenomenal part of um, our psyche and our culture. And it is incredible, folks. Um, but yeah, absolutely. And obviously, folks, 
with the crazy, crazy weather comes uh, spring storms. There. So winter storms there, because I'm so used to winter now. Um, but it comes spring storms, and our friends in the United States know only too well about the spring storms, especially in uh, in Kentucky, in Anover, um, I believe in Colorado as well. There was tornadoes popping up here, there, and everywhere. The one in Anover the other day, thankfully nobody was killed, so I can say this very, very confidently and comfortably. Um, it was one of the most picturesque, beautiful tornadoes that Reed Timmer um, has ever, ever captured on, on video and through drone and through photo. It was sheer wonderful, wonderful um, stuff that was there. Um, and of course, like we say, thankfully no one was injured um, or hurt. There was obviously severe damage done to buildings and all our thoughts and prayers go to those wonderful people. And that is the news for this week, folks. So the Artist Heart Live, historically, when we put this show on, it used to be on a Friday at five. And of course, it would be Friday at five. And it's time for the Artist Heart Live. And I would do music and I would, uh, you know, read a little bit and have a little bit of fun and paint a little bit. Well, here, folks, we've got... We We've upped the production value, as I'm hoping you can tell. And thanks to our very, very good friends uh, all over the place. We'll be talking about them later on who have provided amazing content for this show. Um, and uh, yeah, so what we want to do now, want to go back into our time machine, if you will. And I want to reintroduce you. If you haven't seen it before, I want to actually introduce you to it for the very, very first time. And it is called The Husky Smile. And this is a speed painting video. Uh, of a piece of art that I did back in like 2017 and it's called The Husky Smile. It's a beautiful painting of a husky and uh, and it, I believe actually has got a song on there as well uh, from back in the days when I recorded before we had all this amazing equipment and all this great stuff available to us. So the song might be a little bit raw. If you don't like the song, folks, just put it on mute and put something else on. But I think you'll really, really like seeing the painting come to life. So check this out all the way back from 2017 and I will see you in a moment.
Well, folks, I hope you really, really enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed painting it. It was back in 2017, and my goodness, I still, I still enjoy seeing that painting and hearing that song now. Uh, you know, it was just tremendous, tremendous. Did I say 2018? I meant to say 2017. Um, but it was, it was tremendous, tremendous fun. And uh, that painting itself actually now hangs on a wall in Carlisle in England. And um, yeah, tremendous fun, folks. So if you are interested in ordering your very own custom painting, uh, whether it be of pets, whether it be of people, whether it be landscapes, seascapes, nature, um, you name it, Get in touch with us at johnmorrisartfromtheheart.com and, uh, and order yourself some phenomenal, phenomenal artwork um, that is all traditionally made, framed, all of that kind of beautiful stuff. And I can't wait to share more artwork with you in the very near future. So today, folks, now we're moving on to the next segment, which is, well, it was originally called Art Tips with John. I've renamed it recently, recently, and this isn't in the script or anything. But I've renamed it Creative Tips with John because this show not only goes out to artists all over the world, uh, phenomenal artists all over the world, but also to authors, to actors, to speakers, to teachers, to yoga instructors, and 1P instructor on the Isle of Wight. Uh, but that aside, folks, the art tip for this week is a very, very simple tip, and it is get started and get started with what you have and where you are at. The most important thing that you can do if you are looking to get from where you are to where you want to be is to get started. Many people procrastinate their entire life away and then they wonder, they get to the end of the life and say, man, if I'd only, if I'd only just done this, if I'd only just done that, if I'd had the opportunity, take the opportunity. It is not going to just sit and wait for you forever. But don't die with the music still in you. There was a, a wonderful story that Les Brown uh, talks about motivational speaker in the United States and he he talks about a story that he had heard um, about a, a lady that had uh, I, I, without telling you the entire story which which escapes my memory right now I'll just get straight to the punchline but this lady had been taken into hospital and during her last hours she hallucinated and she could see around herself the ghosts of all of these different ideas that she had had. So one might have been an artist, one was an actor or an actress, one was as a motivational speaker, one was as a teacher, one was as a singer and a ballet dancer. And she'd been too afraid to actually act upon these um, amazing gifts that she had been given. And they basically said to her, you know, we came to you for life, but because you were scared, too scared to take a chance, we're going to die now with you. And I remember being diagnosed with colitis when I was 15 years old, which is a, a horrible condition that, that affects your, um, your digestive system and your intestines and things like that. And, um, you know, I, and I remember, you know, sitting there and, and thinking, gosh, well, I don't want to wait. Um, you know, and that's when I became an artist. And that's when I became a, a bodybuilder. And that's when I became a musician. And that's when I became a youth minister. And then an author. Um, and, and all the other things. I was always just like, okay. I don't know how, but I'm going to figure out how to make this work. Um, so that would be my tip for you today, folks. Begin where you are at with what you have. Don't delay. Don't wait for things to be perfect because it never, ever will be. Begin today. If you want to be an artist, start painting, start sketching, start learning from people such as the great John Morris. Um, and from our courses as well uh, that are available on Udemy and on OutreachArt.org. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can just click the links below and go straight there. And if you're watching on Facebook, I believe you can be able to do the same as well. Um, but don't delay, folks. You know, if you want to be an author, begin writing. Uh, you know, and, and I can talk about that much more in, in another episode, should you desire uh, for me to do so. But we are keeping the show moving along. So that is our art tip for today. This, that is our creative tip. Begin with what you have and where you are at. Just, just begin. Just get started. Google it. You know, how to become an artist. How to become an actor. How to become a musician. How, how, how. All the information is out there for free on uh, on youtube on probably on tiktok as well nowadays and through reels uh, but just get started don't die with your music in you and study that which you desire to become and trust me on this um you won't be disappointed even if even if you know it, it only ends up in small successes in the worldly sense you are living the very reason that you are here. And that is a phenomenal, phenomenal thing. So folks, we are moving on to Artist in the Spotlight. And this week's artwork um, comes to us, as you can now see on the screen, 
um, from one of my absolute favorite artists. This man um, actually would sketch. He would he would gr he would go up, and we we did a course on this, um, I believe, uh, many moons ago. Um, but he would go up into his bathroom, which was uh, not like what we have now. It was a little bath inside um, a, a brick shack, and he would close the door, and he would literally just sit there in the bath sketching. Uh, this man was known for being very, very unique. A man who danced to the beat of his own drum. A man whose appearance, not dissimilar to my own, although less uh, articulate. Um, you know, he, he was a genius at what he did. And uh, But when I think of people calling me today the modern day renaissance man, this man personified what it truly meant to be a renaissance man. Um, arguably better than any in our modern era. And that man, of course, was Salvador Dali. His simple paintings that were packed with detail and told such a story just made for amazing viewing. And it is my delight to share with you uh, this painting that is up on the screen right now called The Melting Clock. And um, as you can see here, I mean, my goodness, first of all, the things that always strike me about this is the sky in, in the, the distance. Um, you know, if you actually break down a Salvador Dali painting, there is so much going on here and the, and the uh, background could very, very easily be, you know, a, a landscape painting or a seascape painting. Um, you know, we've got the beautiful hills, almost like the, the White Cliffs of Dover, over to the side, um, the, obviously they're, they're not. Um, and and it, the sky to me just really captures something magnificent that I adore. And then as you move closer in, there's, there's some very strange stuff that's there. Uh, one on the left side actually looks like a springboard. Um, I'll, I'll move the mouse across. It, over here, it looks like a springboard. Uh, Salvador Dali was renowned for painting uh, very ab abstract and bizarre things, but they all meant something. Um, close to the ground, you know, you, you've got a... A, a little tree that's there and this this clock that's just dangling off is almost like it's a wilting flower and I believe the symbolism in this was you know don't take time for granted but don't take it too seriously either there has only been the eternal now uh, there has never been really a, a history I know that sounds stupid but your history is all in your mind and uh, you know when you explore things from that point of view and existentialism and, and uh, you know all these sort of fanciful things you really get to see a very different perspective of the world and that's and that's what I absolutely love um, but yeah con continuing throughout this painting I mean we, we've got little pocket watches which I adore um, rags and it almost looks like a wrapped body you know and uh, to me the symbolism for that is you know something that's perhaps the time is short and um, you know that again I suppose it fits in with what we were talking about with the creative tip that it, it's not to be wasted um, so that has been a painting that I have absolutely loved. I have taught courses on that, and actually the, the funny story, I'll see if we can put up a picture. Um, funny story about it, when I taught the courses, it was all about symmetry and, and the difference between light and dark and, um, you know, good and bad and, and life and death and that kind of stuff. And it was, it was almost like the tale of two trees. And on one side, on the left, you had this tree with a face that was full of life, that was full of color. Uh, I think I did it later on in, in later years with uh, with a cactus. Um, we had sombrero wearing cactuses or cacti um, on one side, and then this tired, miserable, grumpy cactus on the other side. Um, and, it, and it was contrasting the two. And then teaching the children how to paint, and adults teaching it, teaching all how to paint. Um, you know, the, this amazing melting style effect. Uh, it, it was a sheer joy to behold, and, uh, and I thoroughly, thoroughly loved it. Um, so folks, I really hope you've enjoyed this week's show. We are only on for half an hour. It is a shorter show, but if you have, make sure to hit that like button and make sure to leave us a comment in the section below. Do all that good stuff. Share it with a friend because it could be the very thing that they need to hear and see and uh, the time that they're struggling and so much more. And from all of us here at The Artist Heart Live, don't forget to check out um, not only the links in our section below if you're interested in learning how to paint, if you're learning in, in, and interested on how to build a successful art business, and if you're interested in you're ordering your very, very own custom-made artwork, all the links are in the section below. Make sure to check them out, folks, and if you've got any questions for me, drop me a message, and I will be right here to help. 
Until next time, take care, God bless. We're gonna finish the show the way that we began with a song, folks, so pick it up. Who says you can't go home? It doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter where you go. If it's a million miles away, or just a bus up the road, take it in, take it with you when you go. Who says you can't go home? Who says you can't go home? There's only one place and only one thing. Yeah.